Our last but not least panelist is Dr. Paul Williams from uh, the George Washington University, who will be discussing the African Union's perspective in evolving partnerships. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chris, and thank you for the invitation to be here. As you just heard, I was asked to speak about the future of the African Union's partnerships when it comes to peace and security issues. And so obviously the first thing to say is I'm not speaking for or on behalf of the African Union. I'm a curious outsider and curious observer when it comes to the uh, AU. So this is very much a sort of outsider's perspective on what I think the AU is thinking about these issues. And I wanted to use my time to just talk about three sets of issues really. What are the AU's priorities, um, first of all? Um, Secondly, what are its key partners? And there are lots, but what are the, the key ones? And just to finish briefly with some of the key challenges as I see them facing the AU in trying to work with its partners in this um, area. So firstly, on the, the priorities in the immediate future at least are, are pretty clear in the peace and security realm. The, um, the bumper sticker version is that the African Union is trying to silence the guns on the African continent by 2020. Um, and I think we all can agree pretty quickly that that's not going to happen in its entirety. But I still think it's very instructive to look at a new roadmap that the African Union has put together. It just released in the last couple of months uh, what it calls its um, African Peace and Security Architecture Roadmap for 2016 to 2020. So the APSA roadmap is what I'll talk about in terms of how the AU defines its own priorities. And what it's tried to do in this roadmap is a, a few things um, that are important. It's trying to create, first of all, a shared understanding of what exactly are the goals and objectives of the APSA, this peace and security architecture. What is it supposed to achieve over this next four or five year period? Can we generate a shared understanding through this roadmap of what are the different roles and functions of each of the many stakeholders in the APSA architecture? Can we also emphasize um, the need for increased collaboration and better coordination between all these moving parts and stakeholders? And then can, through this type of roadmap document, can the AU communicate more effectively and clearly to the different stakeholders what it's actually achieved and, crucially, how it's trying to measure progress towards achieving a, peace, um, and a peaceful and secure continent? So if that's the rationale behind the roadmap, what do we see are the strategic priorities that it talks about? Well, it talks about five um, strategic priorities for this 2016 to 2020 period. The first one is conflict prevention. And what the AU is trying to do here, it says, is effective and timely, direct and structural prevention of armed conflicts and political crises. And it, it stresses quite importantly that we are talking about both direct and structural forms of preventative uh, engagement. The second priority is about uh, effective responses to crisis um, and conflicts on the continent. And here, the emphasis primarily is on ensuring that African peace operations can deploy rapidly and effectively in the field. And this has meant uh, an attempt to enhance the operational readiness and effectiveness of the African standby force and the African Union's commission or the bureaucrat's ability to plan and support and manage uh, those peace operations that deploy in the field. Its third stated priority then is about reconstruction and peace building. And it wants to be able to, able to provide timely and coordinated to support to states and communities that are emerging from uh, war and other forms of organized violence. And its fourth stated priority is what it calls um, delivering a, an effective and timely response to strategic security issues that it sees affecting the continent. And it has quite a long list of, uh, under this heading of strategic security issues, but to give you a list of the, the priorities, it's talking here about transnational forms of terrorism, transnational forms of organized crime, uh, illicit financial flows, maritime security and piracy issues, trafficking in uh, a variety of things from narcotics to humans to small arms and light weapons, uh, and then cybercrime, which it bundles with a sort of list of uh, new crimes it thinks are facing the continent. And so how to respond effectively to this new bundle of strategic uh, security issues is priority number four. And priority number five, which brings us to the theme of this panel, is how does it coordinate um, effective partnerships with all the different stakeholders that are needed to make this African peace and security architecture actually work and, um, and come together? 
So who exactly are these partners? 